First, let me say how happy I am to see all of you. Really, welcome. I can see you. <laughs> but do please silence the microphone as you lend me your ears. Does someone have a dog? My, what a sharp bark. A hound from hell. If you would. I am so grateful. All of you are so supportive of what we're trying to do in the midst of this trial, this agony, this crisis. So willing to meet in this virtual space. Alas, we must speak across cold screens. Thank you for being here, right now. Others can't, won't, or don't want to get up off their couch and into the theater. But not you. Not you. You'll go to anything. <laughs> Although, I suppose you are on your couch in this instance. <laughs> but you, unlike your neighbor on their couch, are eagerly awaiting the reopening, a flourishing, a rebirth. Not like your friends with their replays of Friends or Frasier, listening to the soundtrack of The Lion King again, or Cats, or Wicked. Our work asks questions, provokes, threatens if it must. It can't all be for your consideration, Broadway, Academy Awards, Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, Lammys, Golden Globes, Arizonies. There must be a place for the marginalized, the messy, even, yes, the mediocre. And we have always been that place. The place for development, for forward motion, improvement, confronting crisis creatively, muting the old with the lusty cries of the new. Crises are an opportunity for us to get ahead. Finally, you are the searchers. It is for us you seek. You search out that new show, that new bar, that new restaurant on Roosevelt. But you can't. They're all closed. What to do? You, the early adopters who seek out live art on the walls, on the floors, hanging from the ceiling, real time, here and now, visceral and vocal, in your face, silence your cell phones, honest to God, confrontation with another human being, theater. Capital T! Immersive? You've been submerged for years, not drowning, but waving, waving, waving a checkbook. And we appreciate it. We are the shore you swim to. Surely you choose us. Hallelujah! But now our shore is closed off, sealed. And here we are, huddled together in this chapel of art as the storm batters the walls. Our relationship is like a long marriage. Somewhat challenging, occasionally arousing, but mostly merely a brief moment away from the abyss. That is the void we fill. We are your refuge. And have we ever refused you? Even now, in this crisis, we reach out to you. We reach. Do not refuse us in our hour of need. Together, let's breathe. Exhale. You know more than most the nectar of culture is not free. It flows no matter the weather, the stock market, the vagaries of a virus. Our theater may be closed, but our funds flow. They flow. Mortgages, contracts, kill fees, fair use, no fair use, no use at all, useless, and we reach into our pockets and nothing. But the first rule of theater is yes and. We can adapt to anything because we have creativity, multiplicity, identity, trans, this and that, and always, always, always diversity. <laughs> diversity. Oh, the forms I have to fill out, the seminars, the workshops. <laughs> Here in our home, we gave you a chance to experience the other. Our theater has always provided an easy to clean up afterwards hashtag trending exclamation point experience for you to explore, exploit, enjoy, and ultimately invest. You take risks. Oh, you love risks as long as you aren't risking life and limb or your own job. You see, I do know you, my 
our audience. All the years we've brought you artists to explore sexuality, identity, the decline of the family, addiction, racism, sexism, I mean, you name it, we can find an artist who can turn it into art. Like I said, diversity, you deserve it, we serve it, and if you don't like it, we take the blame. This is a special time, a critical time, an apocalyptic time. But please understand, for those of us who toil in the terrain of culture, it truly is doomsday. Existing one paycheck, mere pocket change for most of you, one paycheck away from the abyss. And I do not exaggerate. I clarify, reminding you, our audience, of your duty. And the abyss is here. You should be grateful, more grateful, much more. Every day here is a kind of Thanksgiving and we are the Indians, the turkeys, the pilgrims awaiting a massacre. I honor the native people upon whose land we are standing. The, the, um, the, the they, the them, those who came before us. You have no idea the sheer want, the need, and let me be frank, the greed, the greed of some of these artists, like children, like dogs, like spoiled mutts, yapping little spoiled mutts who nip at our heels and bite the very hand that feeds them. I mean, can they not see that we are in a crisis? These directors, performers, writers, designers, all they care about is their fees. My contract, where's my credit, my reimbursables? They're fairly panting for their per diem. They want to kill me with their kill fees. I mean, did I see this coming? Am I Cassandra? I've had negotiations with hustlers and drug dealers that were easier than this. <laughs> but we love them, don't we? <laughs> our artists, we love our artists and the art our artists so artfully share. <laughs> they are our, our truth tellers, our seekers of greater wisdom. And we are in thrall to them, are we not? Our art, I art. Thou art <laughs> hallowed be, <laughs> but must they be so, so, so hungry, so wanting, so rocking of the boat that I try in vain to stabilize them. I stand at the shore and wail, I wail. Can no one hear my cries in this crisis? Lord. Why have you forsaken me? <sighs> but that is my job. The job that I am asking you, yes, you, to help me with. Our marriage, remember? <laughs> hmm. Did you know Plato, the great Greek philosopher, banned artists from the Republic. <laughs> but we are not Plato. So please, in this time of shuttered theaters, shuttered minds, I ask you to unlock the doors, unleash the floodwaters of finance upon us, reach into your wallets and give it up for the administrators, the artists, <laughs> the artists.